let's look at some additional cryptographic practices that you'll run into. Steganography is something that we haven't mentioned yet. Everything that we have discussed thus far deals with normal cryptography. Now, normal cryptography just encrypts a message. And when you send an encrypted message, if anyone intercepts it, it's obvious that you have some message that you've encrypted. Steganography goes to the next level and hides the fact that the message actually exists. In normal use, the message is hidden inside another document. Now, graphic files are very common carriers. The reason behind that is that graphic files normally exist at such a high resolution that you can make very subtle changes to the file without changing its overall appearance. For example, what if we took every 16th bit and changed it from whatever it was to a value that we could then go through and farm out all the different 16th bits, put them together, and recreate our message? Well, every 16th bit is not going to change the visual appearance of any graphics file out there. Now, of course, it would if you went to a very, very low level of granularity and you started looking at each individual bits. But if you're just viewing an image, it looks like the original. One of the first uses of steganography was back during the time, a little bit later than Caesar. But what they would do is they would shave a man's head and then tattoo a message onto his head. Then once his hair grew back, no one even knew that he had a tattoo on his scalp. Now, obviously, this was not a very short-term approach. This meant that you had to shave, tattoo, and then wait for the hair to grow back, and then he could transport the message. So a period of more than just a couple days would have to elapse. So again, this is not something you would want to send a message overnight. But this was an interesting way of hiding the fact that the message was even there.